Hello, hello. <laughs> well, here I am with another boxing uh, prediction video. Yes. Well, next weekend uh, we got uh, we got we got <laughs> we got a few fights. Yeah, uh, can could be good potentially. But anyway. First one I want to talk about is uh, Muro John Akhmadaliev versus Ronnie Rios. It's a fight for the Akhmadaliev's uh, WBA Super World Super Bantamweight title. <laughs> <laughs> and the IBF also, he holds the IBF title. Yeah. So, alright. Yeah, Ahmad Daliev, he actually became um, the double champion in one fight by beating Daniel Roman in 2020 by a split decision. So he's another Uzbek fighter from Uzbekistan. He's a uh, rather, you know, well you know he he can hit definitely but uh since he moved up uh, in level he has only scored once knockout that was in his first defense against ryosuke iwasa yeah and he is 10 and 0 with seven knockouts 27 years of age and only Rios is uh, 33 and 3. That's his record. Seven, 16 knockouts. And 3 losses, 2 by knockout. Yeah. He was last knocked, uh, knocked out and, and uh, beaten in uh, 2018, March, by Azad Pohanisya. And also lost to Ray Vargas in a fight for WBC title before that and Robinson Castellanos also stopped him so Ronnie Rios is a guy who yeah you know he is definitely the underdog of course in this fight and uh, Ahmed Aliyev is a uh, well definitely looks like much fresher guy with much less fights and mileage and all that you know, he's slightly shorter than Rios. He's still, uh, you know, got enough in him to beat Rios. Should beat him quite comfortably. I don't know if uh, it will go the distance or not. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> anyway, I think Ahmed Aliyev is a safe bet. Really, really. So I pick up my leave to win. Um, well, <laughs> it might be well actually by a stoppage because Ronnie Rios has not really won a significant fight for a while. Well, he beat Diego de la Hoya, but that guy has only got that name. That's all. That was in 2019. So since then, he's pretty much done. Nothing really significant. So, uh, yeah. All right. Moving on to the next fight. But anyway, I, I would say maybe most likely is that Akhmadali wins on points. Yeah. All right. And then we have Jesse Rodriguez Franco fighting against Lisa Ketzer Rubisai. Or also, as they call him, Isaac Silvangek. All right, so this guy, Jesse Rodriguez Franco, he just won the WBC Super Flyweight title uh, in February this year when he beat Carlos Quadras. But you know, it looks impressive on paper, but Quadras was actually past his prime you know, already, so that's obvious. Had lost before that to. Juan Francisco Estrada by an 11th round TKO, and yeah, they lost to McWilliam Saroyo, and yeah, a few others, Roman Chocolate, and uh, Mr. Wongek, <laughs> or Sorumsai, he's a, 
Well, his last loss was to Estrada, but that was kind of, you know, a very close fight. Very close fight. Could have gone either way, you know, I think. So it wasn't really a real major loss for him. Yeah, definitely not. But uh, it kind of set him back because he had, was really riding on a wave, you know, to put it that way. He was, had stopped Chocolatito Gonzalez, then he beat Estrada himself and a few other guys. And then, you know, he was the WBC champion. And, and, but since then, he's beaten Amnat Ruan, right? also on points and two other less uh, much less significant guys so Jesse Rodriguez Franco I don't really know that much about him although all I can see is 20 he's 22 years of age 5'4 67 inch reach and uh, I don't know his age but he's certainly over 30 <laughs> <clears throat> he's certainly a lot, uh, considerably older. He's five foot three. He's got sixty-three inch and a half of reach. So there he is at a disadvantage. But he's not really a fighter who is bothered by that. You know, usually, you know. so Mister uh, Rubis side, let's call him that. I don't like him suddenly. I don't really get why they have so many different names in Thailand, these fighters. But it's their thing anyway. I think he will uh, probably win this because uh, Jesse Rodriguez Franco looks to me like, you know, a homegrown champion. And uh, he, yeah, beating Quadras was, you know, quite good performance, quite good achievement. but. As I said, Quadras was on, on the slide already. So it's not gonna like it. that fight, that win automatically makes him a, you know, a favorite or anything. That's not the way it is. No, no way. No. <laughs> so well, well. Yeah, I mean, uh, as I said, Mr. Srisa Ket. He is also now been a pro for a while. He's actually 35, I just uh, found. Yeah, all right. So he is like at the end of his, uh, you know, best years, you might say. But still, you know, he's a very good fighter who has true power. We saw that he knocked out, <laughs> you know, who? Chocolatito himself. And uh, yeah. But he also can win on points, as we've seen against Estrada. He's a pressure fighter, of course, a pressure fighter. Always difficult to, to beat them, to fight them, unless you are some defensive genius, of course. A pressure fighter with power. I guess Franco is also, he seems like that type of fighter as well. And he's got quite a lot of uh, wins by knockout also. Like a clear, like clean knockout, not TKO. Well, his last three wins by stoppage were all clean knockouts. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> all right. So, but I think because of his inexperience, he will be quite. Uh, I don't think he can beat Mister Rubis side because I don't even know why I'm called why I'm calling Mister anyway. Just happen to like it because you know for all the reasons i just mentioned them i just hope that the judges won't you know have a, their dirty paw in this like and uh, you know give the fight if it goes to the distance they might give a fight to franco if he wins like four rounds or something <laughs> that would be really rotten but it won't be the first time it happens in America, you know. They really got a big problem with uh, judging over there in the last years, you know. Anyway, uh, I kind of think that uh, Rungusai wins on, like by stoppage, in the, but not so early, 10th round or 8th or 9th, something like that. 
Yeah, all right. <clears throat> and Julio Cesar Martinez is back as well. <laughs> well, he lost his last fight to Chocolatito, and uh, now he's fighting McWilliam Saroyo, who has, uh, has, you know, lost four times now already in 25 fights. And he's 36 also. You know, I really like Martinez as a fighter because, uh, well, they fought already Why when Martinez was the WBC champion. Yeah. He was a very good champion. I mean, he's a small guy, but who is real, really like mobile, who moves well, hits well, very like a clean, sharp puncher. The way he throws his punches, I like that, you know. So, uh, yeah. The way he kind of uh, slips and also slips punches <laughs> and uh, counter attacks and all. So, yeah, I think uh, uh, McQuillian Saroyo hasn't really been, uh, you know, well, his best win was when he beat Carlos Quadras, which I already talked about in 2018 in a close fight. So, that's pretty much it. He's lost all his other big fights, you know. And, uh, He's simply not going to win this fight. No way. No way. So, yeah, definitely. Julio Cesar Martinez should win this. Yeah. And, uh, well, maybe not by, not by a stoppage, but anyway, uh, on points, if nothing. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> yeah. So, Hmm, I guess that would be all, maybe, yeah. There are a couple other fights, but I don't want to really do that, because I don't know that much about those fighters. Hecky, Boomer, <laughs> Sam Eggington fights. All right, that would be all for this time. See you. Have a good one. Bye-bye.